Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You, you little third class lady's mate? Oh. <laughs> we seem to have caught this sailor on the bad days, said the son. I'm not sailor. My mother gave me name. I'm Senior Crewman, Beef Stroganov. Phew, the best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. First class cabin area. Um, Mr. Stroganov, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Burya steamship, for very important reason. Persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens travel in secret, many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow that stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in the ocean, but Stroganov is not animal. Thank you. Wait, please. If I may, I was wondering. Does the cabin next to Mr. Asogi is currently occupied? Da! Sato-san, did you understand that? It sounded like Da! <laughs> I mean, it's probably Russian for yes. Or no. <laughs> it's yes, yeah. Genius. <laughs> it is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like uh, there is somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Passenger in the next door cabin. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Sogis? His name is Mr. Grimsby Roylot. He is very important uh, Western gentleman. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it, he has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylet is authentic western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East Islands. It was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roylet came aboard? It is not your business. Come to think of it. Even though we've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmos Cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Not my business, okay. Last mm -hmm. night. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganov? Da, all the time. All time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is said about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Нет! Oh, Sato-san, did you understand that? It was clearly a no. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And you didn't take any, hear any strange noises or sense anything was running some way? I said no! Sorry! I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough. I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yes, alright. 
Mucklehead to second class area is tightly locked at all times. You skip when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain, or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yeah, what? it's a Russian proverb. Uh, it's Russian proverb, uh, lobster uh, whistles on top of the mountain. It's Russian, it's Russian, it's Russian, it's Russian. English proverb says when the pigs fly. It means never. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Well, that was easy. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve the particular mystery. Let's ask. Wait. Knock. Did the guy actually allow us to do that? He, he left. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> why did he left? <laughs> so, I, I didn't understand I that he actually left. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Okay, let's uh, see a picture. This looks like a plan for SS Burya. Show us each deck, look. The Burya is a large scale steamship with triple skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering! Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but how is it? That such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink in the bottom of the ocean. Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhoto san. Okay, then explain, please. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. Archipelago. <laughs> archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes. They're not metal, but they're are enormous lumps of earth, many many times larger than the ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. <laughs> 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 well, I suppose so. <laughs> Amazing argument. Actually, actually uh, these uh, <laughs> uh, pieces of earth are connected to the inside of the earth. Yeah, that's why it core. doesn't <laughs> sink. That's why it doesn't sink. <laughs> I thought she will explain to me the whole... E oh no, why it doesn't it sink? It's because of the steam as well as the air, right? Maybe? Like, there are certain steam parts of it, of the, uh, of the ship. Maybe? Maybe? <laughs> I, Wait, I actually know. need to Google this. <laughs> Me too. Now I'm interested in that. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasant shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the whistle to a complete stop. I mean, to be fair, if we press it now, we might actually... <laughs> what are you doing, naruhoto -san? You mustn't touch it. Oh, this I have to see. <laughs> oh, I see, that's it. Well, this is an emergency situation, just look at these handcuffs. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. <laughs> that's a cute uh, pose. If you were yes, to <laughs> I agree. If you were to bring this whistle to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. <sighs> I wish everything would just stop, this ship included. If you have, no, have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. Ah! Ah! <laughs> what was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It uh, must have been a woman. Then decide. Ah, oh, okay. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes! I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking door doors off their hinges. 
Please, wait, Mr. Shams. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. Wait. It doesn't? So you can just grab it and move it? And how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What prey can I kick? I, I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. January 9th. SS Buria, first class cabin number two. What? I always act him. Cool. Okay. Quiet! The Western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. We we heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd! As you can see, there is nobody but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be on the, the only person here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out! All of you! Now! Please excuse the intrusion, but you're Mr. Grimsby Raylord, I believe. That's me. And you are? I'm the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm a great detective among great detectives, one who turns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. The man used that magazine like a business card. <laughs> a detective? Hmm. I do not try detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there uh, wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might, as well, might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid! How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. Let's look at me. Oh, holy shit! So that actually it's was true. Oh my! <laughs> did, did you see that, Mr. Narhoto? Yes, the case just shook. I mean, a dog might be inside it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave now, otherwise I'll cut the steward. Oh, the steward. So this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Crimes Grimsby Royal. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before the burly sailor returns. Hmm, okay, let's see them. Ha <laughs> Sean's just in the desert. Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Shams? You need only address me as Shams. That's what I just did, isn't it? No, without Mr. <laughs> well, um, Mr. Shams, what were you doing there? Why, I was resting, of course. Okay, it's high time for nap. <laughs> resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you will need to call my great powers for of detection into service. Oh! And it will seem that the hour is upon us now. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, um... No, actually, you are spot on, for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in the cabin, Mr. Roylott, is clearly trying to hide something. And you think, uh, and you know what is the most effective weapon to use against the Russian? Hiding a secret? Why? Why, the truth, of course. For it should be pointed out such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? 
Would you like to witness it? Oh yes, please. I mean, the guy has a weapon. <laughs> he has uh, just a pair of shears. Well then, what are you about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detectives greatly at my great deduction to the case. Yeah, it will be a new gameplay now. Oh, interesting. Could this man be more uh, hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on uh, accounts of his Russians? Or Russian on, on account of his dubiousness? I, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you or anyone. That's right, Mr. Shaw and Mr. Sholmes. I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on the first meeting, but I, but I once read. It's a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh, I must have complete silence. What are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? Ah, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite m made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Rowlett, I have reached two incontrovertible, incontrovertible conclusions. What? What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh. And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn. You are. At this very moment, no less, in the midst of commi committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers of nervous tensions as you realize you have been discovered. His face uh, turned uh, purple. <laughs> kind of. Does it not? <clears throat> oh, Naruhoto san, I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Sholmes' great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? Not in the infinable. Ineffable twaddle. <laughs> twaddle. Oh, yes. I've read about it in the countless times in the adventures of Hardlock Sholmes. And now I experience the astonishing impact of his great deduction in the first hand. Just like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Royal's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholmes' conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Very well then. I shall uh, elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board a train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Oh, new game. The plan? great deduction. Da, yes. Uh, <laughs> da. The game is afoot. Topic number one. Old man's identity. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Royalet, obviously what catches the eye in the first place. Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. 
You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious spirit you sport. Yeah, probably. I'm not now moving on. The question then big is this. Wow, would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper in particular. The fascinating front page article. Oh, I see. Which it will appear you have read also, Mr. Roylet. Oh. That's cool. That actually, I didn't notice that. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads Revolutionary Willing Boshivak flees Russia via Shanghai. I mean, he does look a bit similar, but as you cannot yeah, fail to observe, simple. the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. But like the face is different, the beard is very similar. Yes. Like the guy is much more thinner. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. Don't say that he's villain Bolshevik. <laughs> you are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, villain Bolshevik. I'll just clap to that. <laughs> Not that I've heard of part of you myself, you understand. Conclusion: A revolutionary on the run. Topic number two. Run doing. Now, as for my second conclusion, you are at this very moment on the brink of committing a most gru grievous crime. And the proof of the scram? Oh, there! Oh, yes, Mr. Rylet. Taking unawares, people have. Propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. <coughs> and I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. It's actually true. Yeah. The answer will be seek lies where their furtive glance fail falls. Yeah, it's, it's something inside it. The proof of a crime exists before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly get on ceiling inside, we ask? By my estimation. A young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit therein. Don't be absurd. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me. We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup du l'air betrays you. And once again, we, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found on the pages of this newspaper. Or there is another, most stimulating article. If you turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page, yeah, I didn't look at the back page. Yeah. A renowned primer ballerina of the Noah Witch Ballet disappears from Shanghai. I see. Пажа известный в Шанхае пропала известная прима балерина балета Новович. Such headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, article the young lady's name is Nicolina Paulova. 
Και λέει πριν ο Φιγιάν Πολερίν Φάστ κομκλούς Χερλοκ Χόμς Γκριτ διδόξιν από το Ρωσιαν Ενίγμα Ελμενσκι Αχα But like we didn't do any of the gameplay, <laughs> so it's probably wrong. <laughs> there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sato-san, it wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Shom's brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. I mean, it was similar. It's just that, you know, <laughs> it's a guess, a wild guess. Yes, it was just a wild guess. Or maybe he just uh, played with us. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Shoms, could you come over here a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions, would you mind? Not at all, go on. Well, to start with, there is a newspaper article. I think we've had the same discussion before, but... These two men! Look nothing like each other. <laughs> ah yes, I recall our discussion earlier. And at the time, I believe I told you. That the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolution revolutionize his own appearance. I mean, if that was the case, why didn't he just cut off his beard? In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roller does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. The guy is That's another thing. The part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not at the first glance, it is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. How could I? Hmm. Well, if she's 15, the 10 years worth of her will be poking out from the case. <laughs> <laughs> Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop, of, a, troop, a troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain uh, uh, liveness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it will surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contor contortionsness in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. This whole thing is turning into a circus. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Narhoto, something occurred to me about Mr. Shom's deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seems a little off. <laughs> Your idea of a little may be a little of itself, Mr. Sato. It's just uh, one or two keywords in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Hmm. Switch some keywords in his deductions. Yes, but very tactfully. I feel, I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Shom's great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my mind. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Ah, and you my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to, to look at your wrists. My wrists? Oh yeah, the cuffs. Again. <laughs> oh, no. it's gone! <laughs> Ah! Where are your handcuffs? 
ฮะเขาเขาดิทิทิกิ I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. I don't believe it, Mr. Holmes. You are a marvel. Oh, that's actually yeah, kind of impressive. Yeah, you're you're Iron Man or Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Yeah, now the gameplay really begins. Oh, I see. Course, correction. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Topic number one. You won't read it, right? Uh huh. I mean, we already read it, right? Okay. We already read. Uh, don't read it. Yes. Hmm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? Not really. <laughs> I doubt that it's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Rowlett either. I suppose the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a keyword here, Naruto-san, and see if it helps the matter. All right, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Rylet. I wonder if it's really his beard that he intended to use those shoes on. Exactly. Uh, if we do manage to find something that seems to fit a sense of Mr. Sholmes' deduction better. Then I leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruto-san. Now I'm capable. Okay. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there is anything we could even use to switch around to that last statement. What exactly was Mr. Rowlett really going to use those enormous shoes for? Oh, interesting. Oh. Yes. What? What the? What's this? It looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. No, no, no. The color is not the point. The point is, what's he doing in the back of Mr. Royal's head, and how is it growing from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true. So stunning, beautiful, and stunningly surprising. Something is definitely not right here. Yeah, what is that? You were on the verge of using the shields to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed, you have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Such a lush golden hair certainly doesn't not befit an old man. Wait, how the hell did you got that hair? What even is that? You are not a man at all. You are a woman, and judging from the length and sheen of your hair. What? One uh, still very much in her youth. Oh, that's so weird. What? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then begs is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolution, yeah. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? What are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, Naruto-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? 
You look like you're in an in, in element uh, as you dance around the room. This isn't the fact of Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm, I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business. Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts uh, at all now. No, that's true, given that Mr. Roylet is actually a woman, huh? Exactly. He, or rather she, can possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the fact as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I have either read or heard about a, a young woman in a situation like that recently. Alright, I'll do my best. Oh, it's the her. Yeah, it's from the newspaper. But the other one, yeah. Развлечение. <laughs> hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruto san Well, no, I... I mean, I... It looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. Tiara za 20,000 rubli. Wow. No, no can I. But look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She's very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. Ah, I'm glad you noticed this article. Ah! <sighs> Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. I mean, you didn't know oh, Russian thank yourself, you. right? She, she pops up everywhere, this Mr. Sholmes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. Why are Russian names so hard to remember? Yeah, I uh, never heard uh, Russian name Nikolina. <laughs> really? Really? Yes, really. <laughs> Maybe it's a really old name that uh, no one uses today. Like, uh, I did hear about certain men having names like Nikolaya or something like that, but not women. Nikolai, Nikolina... Maybe... Actually, maybe. Like, I, but I Nikolai, know some Nikolai's. Nikolai, <laughs> I don't know. It would appear the woman was in a costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 ru rubles. Oh, I see. Oh, how much is 20,000 20, rubles? I have no idea, but I'm quite sure. It must be an un unbelievable sum of money. That sun's eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tear is the property of the Novavich Ballet. It will seem the director is beside herself of worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to record both Miss Paulova and the valuable tiara. They've requested the international assistance at all ports with sailings to Great Britain. Will this be another case of Russian fleeing his uh, or her country? That seems to be the Russian thing to do. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> you <laughs> Well, I don't even go to dignify that with a response, Mr. Narahoto. Okay, the article is updated. Yes! Article about the ballerina. The evidence that reveals the true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. 
That's right. You've hit the nail on the head. Now the prima ballerina of Novovich no Ballet disappears, disappears from Shanghai. It will appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because the true identity is that of Novovich Ballet's prima ballerina. Miss Nikoliva. Nikolina Paulova. Ah! <laughs> oh my god, that's dangerous. Wow, she did a really good disguise. Mm -hmm. You are right. My real name is Ni Nina. Yes, Nina is uh, yeah. was the name of my. Uh, Grandmother. So Nicolina is the full name then. Okay. My real name is Nina. I mean Nicolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. A ballerina on the run. Solved. What's inside the uh case then? Yes. Now, as for my second conclusion... You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. It's, it's a pet, probably. And the proof of this crime over there. Oh yes, Miss Paolova. Taking on words, people have a prop propensity out to let their eyes stray, you see. <sighs> and I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. This woman is a, is a ballerina, and she is right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside the trailing case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, it's the crime this young woman is to committed. <sighs> I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased, Narhotasan. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Oh, the tiara. tiara. Wow, look at this dazzling tiara. I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, Narhotasan, try it on! <laughs> <laughs> what? Me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Okay, so tiara. Yes! The proof of your crime is sure to this tiara. Yeah. Ah. I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Nova Witch ball Ballad, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary... The crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballot troop, unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. Ah! 
I have no one, no family, no friends. I'm all alone and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an Earl of Prussia. It wants to me. This girl is only 15 years old and she's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. Alright, I will tell you everything. There is no point in What's the, wh now. What is inside the, the freaking box? The, the bag? Come on, come come, let us not be hasty. Oh, wait, now they're going to talk about it. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you, yeah. Mystery? What do you mean? Yeah, but the briefcase. You have a staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in your in our presence. It's reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish to remain you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Paolo? Um. My dear girl, there's no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have uh, ever laid eyes on them. Dear me, we're not so well suited for a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup de l'aile betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the books on the shelf. What? Completely changed tech with his deduction now. I think Mr. Schultz is adopting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why was he... But why he has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem likely the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case. It has been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still. Miss Paolo certainly did cast her eyes in that direction, I noticed myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. It must be somewhere in the same area, if that's where her case was invol involuntarily drawn. I agree. That's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden inside the case, should be revealed by following her case in the direction of the bookcase. Oh. Okay, books on the shelf. Oh yeah, it's also no phone, picture. right? That's super weird. And... Oh, and warning sign. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, she has a pet. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard. It says a spurya. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. It was exactly the same notice in our cabin too. I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment will be severe, Narahoto-san. You'll probably be left to drift in the freezing cold ocean. Or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. <laughs> I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? Okay, also cabin door, okay. Uh, but I think rules of passage. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open a case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. That's also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. There's the real reason why you refuse to open it, was revealing its contents. I... We've seen the trunk wobbles from time to time, but no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. 
which leaves but one possibility, Miss Paolova. Insert your, insert your traveling case. Is the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage? A pet. Ah. And they said it together. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I probably I realized when you were saying it. Unfortunately. Session of a prohibited animal solved. Deduction complete. Elementary. That is cool. That's like the that's, uh, uh, cool. Like the, yeah. like the animations and the character animations are so cool. That's that's uh, cool. Really cool.